Welcome back everybody. In this video, we're going to perform pedestrian detection on still images using the histogram of oriented gradients functionality in MGOOCV. In this video, we're going to use MGOOCV and VisualBasic.net in Visual Studio 2010 Express Edition, however, if you prefer a different environment for OpenCV or MGOOCV use, the code we're using today should port pretty easy to any OpenCV or MGOOCV environment. Uh, in this video, we're going to presume the knowledge from the previous videos. Uh, if anything in this video is unclear, please go back and take a look at the previous videos as applicable. So if we do a internet search on histogram of oriented gradients, we'll find that pretty much immediately brings us to the Wikipedia page for it. And the histogram of oriented gradients algorithm is for detecting uh, objects and shapes within an image. And in particular, the histogram of oriented gradients is computed on a dense grid of uniformly spaced cells using overlapping local contrast normalization for improved accuracy. So to make a long story short, uh, this algorithm is particularly good for uh, detecting pedestrians, especially in a traffic scene or something similar, which is uh, how it's used in MGOOCV and how we're going to use it today. Uh, if you're interested in a behind-the-scenes look of how this algorithm works, uh, please see this uh, page here. There's a very nice description. Uh, walks you through the steps and all. And then at the end we have this references section with this link to an eight-page PDF document by the two people that came up with the algorithm. And this is a very well-written document. Uh, again, if you're interested in the behind-the-scenes uh, details, I definitely would, would suggest reading this. Um, of course, anybody who's seen my videos before, I definitely try to stick more to an implementation uh, focus rather than getting bogged down on theory. So please see these two references um, if you're interested in the details. But for now, let's fire up Visual Basic and have it. Okay, so now we've fired up Visual Basic. Let's go ahead and make a project. Choose Windows Forms application. Pedestrian detection. And as soon as that gets up, there we are. Let's go ahead and save it. Pedestrian detection. Uncheck create directory for solution. It still creates one directory anyway. That's all we need. Go ahead and save it. And then we'll go to project, add reference. And then we're going to go to browse, add our references as usual. So we'll go to MGU, CV Windows x86, bin. And then we're going to add these eight references. And that'll take just a moment. And then we're going to go to Project and then Add Existing Item. And then we're going to go to MGU CV Windows x86, bin x86, show all files, and then grab everything that starts OpenCV and ends in DLL. And choose Add. That'll take just a moment to add. And let's choose the show all files button up here. Go ahead and expand. There's our references. And let's choose all our DLLs here. And then under properties, we'll go to copy to output directory, copy always. So at this point, we're ready to design our form. Uh, this is going to be a pretty standard visual basic form design. So to save some time, I'm going to fast forward here. Um, if you're interested in more details, uh, please feel free to uh, pause the video uh, as applicable or see the previous videos where I didn't fast forward as much or consult another source uh, on general visual basic programming. So now our form is all set, so we're ready to start writing our code, and we're going to have five functions in our program today. And for three of them, 
the form one resize event, the button click event, and the text box text change event, we're going to have the environment start to write those functions for us. So let's choose the form and then events. And then we're going to double click on resize. There we go. Now back to design view. And now we're going to simply double click the button. And there's our button click event. And now we're going to select the text box and then the text change event. And now we're ready to start writing our code. So let's go ahead and fast forward for a moment while we set up our five functions and neaten things up a little bit. So at this point, we're ready to declare our member variables and then write our five functions. Uh, the member variable section and the first four functions are going to be pretty consistent with the prior program. So I'm going to go ahead and fast forward at this point, and then we'll slow back down when we get to process, image, and update GUI. So now we're ready to write our process image and update GUI function. We're going to go ahead and get that started by declaring four variables. We're going to have an image, and it's going to be as image of BGR white. And we can go ahead and instantiate that here. So we're going to put new image of BGR white. And for the file name and location, we can simply pass in the text box text. Next, we're going to declare a blank image. And the reasons for that will be apparent in a moment. And we can simply assign that to null. Of course, that's the nothing keyword in Visual Basic. 
And now we're to our, finally, to our histogram of oriented gradients descriptor object. So we're going to abbreviate that histogram of oriented gradients descriptor as histogram of oriented gradients descriptor is going to be assigned new hog descriptor with uh, no arguments passed in. And now we're going to declare an array of rectangles which are going to be surrounding the pedestrians that are found. So we'll call that rect pedestrians as rectangle. Now let's uh, signify on our form here that we're about to start processing. So we're going to put me.text. Processing, please wait. And then we're going to assign to the image box image property the blank image. And the reason for that is that as the processing is being done, we like to clear out the old image and show the blank image and then also update the title bar text to indicate to the user that the program is processing the next image rather than letting the user think that the program is locked up at that point. And let's go ahead and call do events then to make sure our form updates before we get into our histogram of oriented gradients functions. So now we're ready to make our histogram of oriented gradients function calls and this is only going to be two lines. We're going to do histogram of oriented gradients descriptor dot set SVM detector. That's short for support vector machine detector. HOGD descriptor dot get default people detector is what we're going to call it. We don't need to pass in any arguments. And then we're going to assign to our array of rectangles around the pedestrians the result of the HOGD dot detect multi-scale function and we only need to pass in one argument there that's going to be the image and that's it those two lines are all we need to perform the histogram of oriented gradients detection so now that we have an array of rectangles with the pedestrians detected we simply are going to draw those rectangles onto our image so here's how we're going to do that for each rect pedestrian as rectangle in rectangle pedestrians image.draw rect pedestrian so that'll be the rectangle now we're going to choose our color let's go with red and we'll draw a pixel width of 2 and then next and now there's just two steps left we're going to update our image box image property with the image we've been processing and let's update our title bar text also and that completes our program so let's go ahead and do a compile and keep our fingers crossed here and hey how about that one succeeded so we're all set let's go ahead and run it and here's our program let's go ahead and maximize and now we can choose some example images uh, we downloaded 10 just uh, example images from the internet here there's no real rhyme or reason to these these are just sort of 10 random images so let's go ahead and give everything a test run so in this first image here we have uh, a number of detects in the background we have one false detect kind of more or less in the center adjacent to the crossing sign uh, but the main person in the foreground here is very well detected so that's overall that's a pretty good result uh, this next image here there's two pedestrians uh, in the foreground kind of separately from the background with multiple pedestrians and then some people sitting on the left 
uh, this algorithm isn't really intended to detect people who are sitting, so overall the, the two standing pedestrians that are relatively close to the camera are very well detected with no false positives, so we can say this is a good result. Uh, this next image here is the example that's included with the examples in the MBU CV distribution, so of course for their example image the pedestrian is going to be detected well. And this next uh, scene here we have uh, two pedestrians, two very good detections, no false detections on a busy street corner with a number of objects on the background and on each side. So that's an excellent result. And this next scene here is relatively plain, one pedestrian right in the middle. Um, very good solid detection even though the pedestrian's red bag kind of obstructs the view of them a little bit. We still have a good uh, detection and no false positives. Uh, this next scene here, uh, the person in the foreground closest to the camera is detected uh, very well. Um, the person wearing the blue pants is not detected, uh, most likely because his stride is long enough, uh, and then also perhaps something to do with the wooden uh, structure in the background, and we do have a few false positives on the right side, so that's a respectable result. The closest pedestrian to the camera is very cleanly detected, but uh, it's not absolutely perfect. Uh, this next uh, scene is a very, very good result. Uh, here we have a busy street corner and there's five pedestrians in the image and all five are detected very well and no false positives so that's an excellent result for sure and this next image is a little bit of a challenge because it's not really in the, the middle of a street it's in kind of a more of a dimly lit area because of these trees we still have a number of very good detections on the left side we do have one false positive uh, with the third tree in the background there and the sign overlapping each other but still a pretty good result and this next example here is um, by a car company that's doing some image detection, pedestrian detection software. So this is a bit of a contrived scene, but still we have a good result. So in our last image here, we have uh, four pedestrians in a pretty busy city scene here. And all four are identified uh, very well, and there's no false positives. So this is an excellent result. So, on the whole, the histogram of oriented gradients algorithm isn't absolutely perfect, but it really does a very good job of identifying pedestrians. Congratulations! You now know how to perform pedestrian detection on still images using the histogram of oriented gradients functionality in MGOOCV. See everybody next time!